Hey everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with JediInsider.com, your number one news source for everything Star Wars. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the new Star Wars The Black Series 6 inch Ray and Jedi training gear with crate environment. Now this figure from Hasbro is being sold as a Toys R Us exclusive and it comes with this environmental base so it does come in packaging that's larger than a standard Black Series figure. The overall design of the packaging though is very similar to what we've seen with the previous figures in the line. Up in the corner you've got the Black Series logo, you've got artwork featuring Ray. I don't know, it may just be me but Ray looks a little bit cross-eyed with this artwork. Down below you've got the name of the character. With this, because it's a Toys R Us exclusive, you've got that big silver Toys R Us exclusive sticker on the front. On the side, you have the red border. Now, there's no numbering because, again, this is an exclusive figure. And then on the back, you have a look at the figure and a brief bio in multiple languages. Now, with this, you can open this front flap. It just attaches with Velcro. On one side, you've got images of the figure showing off the various accessories and everything. And then on the other side, you have the figure clearly displayed. All right, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside the packaging along with the other contents. Okay, so starting out looking at the figure itself, this is essentially the same figure. It's definitely the same outfit as the regular release version of Rey that we've gotten for The Last Jedi. And the only real difference is instead of having the rubber material for her outfit, they've given her soft goods. So this outer piece here is soft goods and then this inner skirt piece is soft goods. Whereas on the original figure, the regular release figure, this is a rubber type material. And I gotta say, I think the rubber material actually works better. I don't really like how it looks, the soft goods looks on this one. First of all, when I took it out of the packaging, you can see this back piece is all crumpled up and, and wrinkled up and everything. And you could probably take an iron or something and straighten that out a bit. But again, I just don't really like the way it looks. Plus you get some of that tattered string here. You can see kind of strings pulling off on the outfit already. And this is just right out of the packaging. So I think overall the, the plastic works better with this look on the figure than, than the soft goods. Now really the only other difference with, between the two figures is with the face sculpt. They've given her, it looks like, some more paint wash on her, on her skin tone. And again, I don't think it really works very well. I don't know, it looks like she's wearing too much blush or something. So I'm not really liking that either. But sculpt wise, you know, the figure is the same other than the soft goods and such. It's the same sculpt and it's based on the same outfit and everything. You've got the holster for her pistol that she comes with and you've got the same kind of paint markings here with the lighter color and then you've got the brown. And this is still a, a rubber type material here, the holster and everything in this middle piece here around her waist. And then she's got the sculpted arm sleeves and she's got some wash effects. So a little more wash on this version with these. They look more dirty than on the regular release version. So I like that detailing a little bit better. And the pants look almost identical and same with the boots. So really no difference there. Now one other difference that this Toys R Us exclusive Ray figure has over the regular release is, and I, I'm assuming this isn't like a paint blemish, but it looks like she's got a scratch on her right arm here. So I'm assuming that's after some kind of lightsaber duel or something, or maybe she was climbing the rocks or in a crash. I don't know, but they've added this little cut on her arm, which I'm assuming is something that we see happen in the movie. And again, I'm assuming that's not just a paint blemish. So this figure stands just a little bit over five and a half inches tall. Here's a comparison with the regular Last Jedi Rey figure, and these two figures are the same height. And here's a comparison with the Last Jedi Luke Skywalker figure, and Luke is a little bit taller than Rey. So for articulation, it's pretty much the same as the regular Rey figure. You can turn the head to the left and the right. She can look down pretty good, but she can't look back because of the long hair. Arms attach with your standard ball hinge joint there at the shoulder, so she can get her arm out good. And she's got pretty good rotation there. She does not have a bicep swivel, single hinged elbow so she can bend her elbow about that much. Then she's got rotation there at the elbow and she has rotation at the wrist. Hinges on the hand so up and down movement. She has a waist swivel so she's got rotation and you can kind of pivot there at the midsection and she can crunch down maybe a little bit but this belt piece kind of limits the forward movement there at the midsection and then she can look back about that much. Legs are attached with those ball joints so she can do a splits about that much. She can get her leg forward. Now with the soft goods she actually has a little more leg movement there than with the plastic pieces and then she can get her leg back pretty good. She's got a thigh swivel, she's got a double jointed knee, so good bending there at the knee, and then she has hinges on the feet, so up and down movement. She does have some ankle pivot, 
and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Now as far as accessories go for the actual figure itself, it's the same weapons that we saw with the regular figure. However, there are some differences. So this is kind of interesting, but it appears like her blaster here that comes with the Toys R Us exclusive version is actually made with a die cast type metal. It's not just a, a plastic like the one that came with the regular version. So you, you, know, you can actually bend this one a little bit, whereas this one, um, not so much because again, it's, it's die cast metal. So you definitely get more weight to this one um, and a little better paint detail. Overall, though, overall they do look pretty similar. You've got the black markings on this one that aren't on the on the regular version, but paint detail they look very similar. But I do like the fact that they gave made this out of actual die cast metal and like the weight to it. And then same with the lightsaber hilt that's included with her. So this is again made with die cast metal, not just plastic. You've got the black on the handle and the gold here on the button and everything, and a little bit of red as well. So again, very similar paint design to the regular figure, but you know, there's no bending. It's got more weight to it because it's actually made with die cast metal. Now the lightsaber that she comes with with the blade, that is still plastic just like with the regular figure. So that's pretty much exactly the same. The blade color is maybe a little bit lighter color of blue with that translucent plastic. But again, this is plastic. This lightsaber hilt that has the blade attached is plastic and not metal. And as I mentioned before, you've got the working holster and you can stick the pistol in there and it does fit nice and tight. Also the staff that she comes with is made out of plastic. So this is pretty much the same as what we got with the regular release version. The only real difference here is the strap is a little bit different color. It's a lighter brownish color. And then the final thing that comes with this Toys R Us exclusive version that does not come with the regular release is this base, this environmental base piece. And this is based on the planet Crate, which is where the resistance or rebel base is in the last Jedi movie. So I don't know at what point Rey arrives on Crate because you know she starts off obviously on the island, but I guess she rejoins the resistance at some point during the movie. And this comes in two different pieces. So you get this front piece and this is a solid piece of plastic and you've got this red uh, paint on the rocks. I guess that's how the rocks look on Crate. And then you've got a little bit here on the outliers, some gray. And you've got one peg here on this piece so you can stand the figure. And I think it looks pretty much like rock, so no, no complaints there. Again, it's just solid plastic. And then the second piece is uh, got this piece of machinery sticking out of the rock. So I don't know if this is like part of a crashed ship or, or a generator or something along those lines. You know, I'm not really sure what this is supposed to belong to other than it obviously is some type of machinery. And you've got pretty nice detail. It looks like the metal here is kind of bent, which is what kind of makes me think this is part of a crashed ship or something. And then you've got this grayish plastic with some wash effects. So it looks like it's dirty and worn. And then you've got these, what looks like hoses sticking out. And these are done with a metallic dark gray. You've got some line work sculpted in there. So it definitely looks like hoses. So pretty nice detail overall. Now there's no pegs on this piece, so you can't really stand the figure on this section. And it's really up to you how you wanna put these together, but based on the images on the packaging, they essentially have the, the machinery kind of pointing off to the side here, and then this piece in the front of it. And you can stand the figure on the base and she'll stay on there pretty securely and does make for a nice display piece. Okay, so that's my review. So overall, I don't think this is a bad figure. I do prefer the regular version of the figure itself with the plastic as opposed to the soft goods. I just don't think the soft goods look as good on this figure. But I do like the accessories that come with this one. I like the display base and I also like the die cast metal blaster and lightsaber hilt. So if you're gonna get both, I would probably recommend use the regular figure with the accessories of this one. But if you're trying to choose which one to go with, Going by simply the figure, I would probably recommend the regular version. It's also a little bit cheaper. The regular figure costs 20. The normal price on this one is $35. However, Toys R Us is currently listing it on their website at $27. And I believe they only have the in-store pickup option at this time for the figure. But if your store has these in stock, you can probably get it for 27 as opposed to 35. Now we will have a full image gallery up at JediInsider.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. <laughs>